right? Discard the lands. They should hit the Hallow Blade and tap it. I think we can sacrifice one of our Aspirant. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today we have a 71% win rate deck within Mythic Rank in Magic the Gathering Arena. I played 10 plus matches with this deck. It's for best of one, uh, you know, an original deck. The list doesn't exist anywhere else. And it focuses around Relic Robber. This is a 2-2 with haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player creates a 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact creature token. With this creature cannot block at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals one damage to you. So it's going to pile on consistently chip damage and that's a stackable effect they can have multiple constructs on their side of the board it's got haste which is great so if there's an empty field state it goes right in if not we can give it flying with maul of the sky clays plus two plus two has flying and first strike that's absolutely amazing and we can also toss ember cleave on it to give it trample to make sure that damage gets in consistently we do have uh, a couple extra things within the deck, but uh, you know that is the general consensus here. As always, we'll break down each individual card, why it was chosen to be included within the deck, the strengths, the weaknesses. Then we'll visit the strategies and synergies, what's your overall game plan, and the steps you'll take to accomplish it. Then we're into the gameplay footage. I think we had a five or a six win streak here as well within our 71% win rate, 10 match plus uh, gameplay footage for Morals Beatdown, which is a party based uh, slash aggro style deck for you guys. And then, you know, we do have our wrap up thoughts. So if you find any value within the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the channel to a friend, and of course, hit the bell icon so you're notified of all of our future uploads. If you want to support financially, I encourage you to do so on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, and our new Amazon link. And then, of course, we're playing today with Magic Gathering Arena Assistant, the best tracker for the game, metagame analysis, you know, deck videos, deck write-ups, stats. You know, you get your tracker that's off to the left. I get asked every single video what that tracker is. It's Magic the Gathering Arena Tracker, available for free within the Overwolf link in the description below. Of course, everything else is going to be in the Linktree link, uh, you know, whether you're going to follow us on those different platforms, etc., etc. So into the deck list we go four copies of the arc priest of iona as far as i'm concerned this is the best cleric within zendikar rising for the sole purpose of value it costs one its power is equal to the number of creatures in your party obviously it's a cleric so it comes in as a one two if you don't have anything else on the board to increase its power at the beginning of combat on your turn if you have a full party target creature gets plus one plus one and gains flying until end of turn if you have a full party, it's going to be a 4-2, plus you get that plus one, plus one. It can become, if you have a full party, a 5-3 with flying. I don't know how many times I've said this. A 5-3 with flying for one? Are you serious? In what world? Moving on, we've got four copies of Fireblade Charger, a 1-1. As long as it's equipped, it has haste. When it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. The uh, equip for haste is really nice because we can combine it with our Maul of the Skyclaves. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature. You control for three. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, has flying and first strike. This is good for two reasons. We can cast uh, the combination of them for four, which is relatively cheap and doable for three flying damage. That's very good. Plus, when it dies, because now it's equipped, it will deal three damage. So that's really like you're getting six damage for four mana. That's not a bad conversion. Jumping back into our two drops now, we've got four copies of the Illuminarch Aspirin, a 1-1, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. We just talked about the Fireblade Charger when it dies, dealing damage to any target equal to its power. Uh, you know, you can stack the power on that Charger every single turn with the Luminarch Aspirin. It can easily become a 4-4, a 5-5, a 6-6, and then it's not only smashing your opponent, but when it dies, it will probably deal lethal to them as well. Moving on, we have four copies of Seasoned Hallow Blade, a 3-1. You can discard a card to tap it, gaining it indestructible until end of turn. Whenever your opponent goes to remove it, you'll probably just pop indestructible. It doesn't survive exile, which is a bummer, but you just discard from your hand and then keeping it in place so you can continue to apply pressure on your opponent. Absolutely amazing. Three copies of the Cargon Intimidator, a 3-1. Cowards cannot block warriors. You can pay one to choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn, meaning you can pay uh, two for two and three for three, right? So 
either it gets plus one plus one until end of turn target creature becomes a coward until end of turn therefore cannot block any warriors and target warrior gains trample until end of turn which is pretty nice as well four copies of robber of the rich a 2-2 with reach and haste whenever it attacks if defending player has more cards in their hand than you exile the top card of their library you may cast it any turn you've attacked with a rogue and you may spend mana as though it were any color so you know this is just straight up value being able to play your opponent's cards what is better than that into our three drops we already talked about the relic robber a 2-2 with haste whenever it deals combat damage to a player that player creates a 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact and then it cannot block and it also deals one damage to them at the beginning of their upkeep awesome four copies of skyclave apparition a 2-2 and when it enters the battlefield exile one target non-land non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana costs four or less when it leaves the battlefield the exiled cards owner creates an xx blue illusion creature token where x is that card's converted mana cost Four copies of Maul of the Skyclave. We already talked about this. Enters the battlefield, equipped to a creature. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, has flying first strike. And then we can organically equip it for four if that creature has been removed. One copy of Legion Angel, a 4-3 with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a card you own named Legion Angel from outside the game, putting it into your hand. Of course, we do have three additional copies of that in our sideboard. Four copies of Amber Cleave for six with flash. One less to cast for each attacking creature we control. And when it enters the battlefield, equipped it directly to a creature and equipped creature gets plus one plus one has double strike and trample once it's removed we can organically equip it for three which isn't that bad we have some land within the deck surprisingly one fable passage comes in as anything you know we don't want to play slow so we're not wanting to flood the deck with passages four pathways this is a dual land they come in untapped which is really great so we can use them immediately and then of course we have seven mountains and nine planes best of one deck no sideboard today which makes the deck tech a lot more enjoyable and relaxing wow that's so much more added work i've never thought about that as far as the deck strategies and synergies go you know we basically went for, through the whole thing stack your creatures amber cleave like you normally would right if you can't get there then there's some other really cool synergies within the deck we talked about the fireblade charger maul of the skyclave luminarch aspirant that kind of works together really well if your opponent uh is using lots of removal and you want to avoid that removal you know you can also pile your luminarch aspirants plus one plus ones onto your seasoned hollow blade and then you know you've got a big baddie that's never going to be removed technically you would do that a lot of the times unless there's exile if there's exile then you probably go with the charger even though the exile won't affect the charger either it's just uh i think in my opinion a little bit better uh but again that's going to be dependent upon your situation you could also pile on your ro relic robber uh Typically, I would give it to anything but the Aspirant. So when you make your other creatures stronger, it increases the threat of those creatures uh, up to the point of the Luminarch, right? So typically, the Luminarch is super high threat. People are going to be removing that immediately. However, if you don't put the tokens on it, you put them elsewhere, now they're less likely to remove it and remove the other big baddies. So it kind of makes a weird decision-making process for them where... As on the other hand, if you have the Aspirant and you just put the tokens on the Aspirant, yes, you can dodge the Bone Crusher Giant sometimes, but if that's not the case, now you've just put all of the value from that card onto the card and they've just removed that card, so you get nothing. Whereas if you spread it out, you're at least getting something if they remove it. The Skyclave is absolutely amazing. It can go on your Charger, which is great. It can also go on your Robber, which is really good. Uh, the Relic Robber, that is. So if you can hit them a few times with this, it's dealing two damage, plus it creates the artifact, which is going to deal one for a total of three. Plus, I guarantee you it's there for two or three more turns. So I think people are really sleeping on the Relic Robber. And if you can get in uh, with some form of flying there, it's going to be very, very rewarding for you. So, you know, I could break down this all day, play the Legion Angel, pull more from your sideboard, any card advantage, because there is no draw engine here other than Relic, uh, sorry, Robber of the Rich from your opponent and Legion Angel from your sideboard. So if you do get hit with mass wipes, it's going to be a hard time to come back from, but that's not your worry. It's an aggro deck. Just hit it, try to turn four people, turn five people, and repeat that process as many times as you can in a play session to climb rank. So thanks for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share it to your friend. Hit that bell icon. You know the deal. 500,000 gems to give away. We've got monthly cash prize tournaments, all that jazz. Uh, support on Twitch, Patreon, Amazon, and YouTube. Thank you kindly. We've got goodies for the VIPs. Uh, you know, lots of exclusive stuff for our supporters. So get in on that while the getting's hot. Thank you for your time and attention. Make sure to watch to the end so you don't miss out on some once-in-a-lifetime news. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take care and enjoy.
Typically, I wouldn't keep this because we don't have the land for uh, the apparition, but the Luminarch Aspirant and the Seasoned Hallowblade can almost win games on their own. I doubt there's removal. It's going to be ramp. So let's try to go for it. The crab. Whatever. If we can pull up planes, which they just milled two of. Here we go. Taking the crab and the mill capabilities. Sorry. We're up to 3-3. Three, three. Dodging the Bone Crusher Giant now. We could cleave right now. I'm doing it. Maybe we won't. Let's see what happens here. I'm gonna put it on the apparition. Okay, it just gets countered. I thought they could destroy us. So I wanted to put it on the less valuable target there. Wow. Playing the land in case there's a Wari disruption. So we can pay one to dance around it. Hitting for two, there's no way it comes out with Death Touch. Right, they could uh, Thieves Guild enforce us, but we're at five and we milled two, we went to seven. And there would have been no Death Touch there. They're down to seven and we hit for eight. If they play a permanent to block, we have the Apparition. Oh, no way. They hit evens. So we lose both of our blades. Sucks. That's their turn, though. Can we get Skyclave or an Embercleave? Down to five. Lethal next turn. Nice. A new dawn, a new adventure within Boros Aggro. Woohoo! It's a pretty good win rate, and we played a lot of games. It's a lot of land. A lot of land. We're okay, though. Lots of land in your hand means you'll be able to play everything you want. Luris, interesting. Cycling, rogues. That's a nice uh, pickup for three. Probably just gonna get blood chiefed here or something. Yup. Disgusting. Maybe this game we can get that Skyclave out. Oh, I thought they had something. It's like, what? Yeah, we're gonna get it removed immediately. Dang it. Removal tribal. I don't know what's up with people. That's all they care about. This will have haste as a 3 3 with flying. Hit for three. 
goblin construct does one. When we die, we deal three damage as well. So we're still piling it in. Our apparition basically needs to hit their Luris. If this robber gets a good draw, I'm going to be pleased. We have three mana up. Thought Thief. Don't you target us? No way. Alright, we just get to kill the Thought Thief though. And the robber still can attack. It empties their hand so the robber doesn't get the draw. Well, I'd rather have killed the Thought Thief than just done more damage to them. If you seriously have more removal, I'll lose my mind. They're going to bring Luris to the hand, I think. Oh, just an awakening. But if there's nothing for Luris to grab, let's just take the problem at its root and take the thief there. Yeah, cool. Our opponent goes first. I wish we had three land in this hand. I mean, it is very heavy. Like, look at all the equipment. I'm going to toss it. Keeping six. Tossing the cleave. Yeah. If I can let go of it. Maybe we should have dropped the mall, but... We're okay. Removal sucks. If they have a giant. Even that sucks. Let's just get it out and firing. If the robber can get in, we'll go with it. I knew it. Ah, uh, I knew it. Sploosh. Sadly, all you need to win the game is a turn two Bone Crusher Giant most times. They could have another one, but I'm still going for it. Have that lovely additional damage, my friend. It's good. No! I just wanted to skyclave it. They hit us for zero. Nice. I think the Relic Robber with uh, Cloyth, the God of Destiny, could be cool. The double ping damage every turn could be a lot of fun. We're going to look at that in a future video. Are you serious? Removal Tribal or what? Going in, down to 10, keeping the land to chuck. It's a lot of damage, it's like, they only have so many turns, you know what I mean? 
Okay, this could get gross if there's some passage plays. No! Oh my god! <coughs> That's so much damage! We only hit for eight, they are at two. Doesn't work out. Does not work out. Sploosh. That's a perfect passage drop. What if they have other shenanigans? They do. Well, that's a thing. Wow. In for absolute perfect on lethal when we are getting ready to obliterate them. Those dang bone crusher giants. This is the most awkward hand I've ever seen in my life. If we can make this work, anything will work. You don't even have to look at your draw hands if this works. <laughs> we need a land. We really need a land. Crab life. Of course, passage right on top. Did they get a land? No, it was Arc Priest, then two lands. Okay. Nice. Over for six. Woo. That feels good. Oh no. Doesn't feel that good. <laughs> oh my gosh. If the charger dies, that's lethal. They take a draw, nice. Sorry, Crabber. Not today. Too much damage, baby. Sitting at 35 still. <laughs> no one drop. Our opponent goes first. We could pull it. Land looks good. Nope. We do not get it. Selesnia, Yorion, Wicked Wolf. Wicked Wolf! That's our biggest threat here, I think. Don't mind if I do, Hugh. Don't mind if I do. Lethal and four. Which will never happen. We do have our apparition, though. Which comes in absolutely perfect here. Wow. Beating top decks, no big deal. Snag. <laughs> Loving it. I mean, they do get a 4 4 when they Wicked Wolf us. Great Horn, okay. 
Could be far worse than we've expected. I am a bad man. <laughs> Woof! No wolf today, baby! I think this is a little slow, but we'll get there. They play first, so... You know, we could get a cool one drop. Nope. Ooh, shrines. That's interesting. Let's throw our blade out. We don't know if they have removal or not. We should be able to aggro them out. I can snag the fangs with the apparition. This needs to be countered. Oh yeah. Get him, Relic Robber. No! I just wanted to hit with Relic Robber once in this expansion. Let's start taking draws from their hand, or their uh, deck, sorry. A Tranquil Light. Don't mind if I do. I'll take all the shrines, baby. They need to remove our field. Nope. Nice. Kind of an awkward hand, but I think we can make it work. Demir, so we go Hallow Blade for removal. Removal is active. I kind of want to do the robber, but we need to play it safe with the Hallow Blade. We can toss our Apparition. The Denial. Awesome. So it could be rogues, that means. Not necessarily control. Can only assume. Which means we don't want to attack with our Charger. It could go into the 1-3 storing Thought Thief, and that's not nice. They are definitely taking their time about it. Let's toss our cards around. Third land's nice. Apparition. We have one mana up to dodge. Walry's, uh, whatever. And then the Charger can come out as well. Aspirant pushes up our Chargers. It's good value. We can attack now. Yeah, because it will just stop it. It won't kill it. That's okay. We can pull a second plane, so that'll be really nice.
They're playing defensively. We get that planes that we wanted. We have only one in the grave. Robber out first to dodge any mana paying counters that we can. Uh, lofty Denial we can't get around right now, but, you know, the Disruption we can. Uh, another Denial, nice. We can sneak the Hallow Blade out. Charger can go in for three. Ending our turn. They need to remove the Luminarch. The Chargers deal damage as well uh, to any target, which is really nice against rogues. I love when rogues make slow plays. Okay, 2-3 with Menace. It's not bad. Okay. They must have a counter available. Those are two really good mills. Good on them. Now they can counter anything under four. With Drown in the Lock. They have to get rid of that. Oh my gosh. Nine damage. Let's keep the attacker in play. Just remove their creature. The apparition would have just removed it anyways, so it's the same same effect that we were going for. We have six damage within our chargers unless they get exiled. And that goes up every single turn. Very nice. They have to get rid of them sooner than later. Right? And that's like, well, then we have to leave the Luminarchs in play. And it's just like a, a whole pile of no. <laughs> Not good. It's so satisfying against rogues. All Like, just... You think about it, bud. We're not equipped yet, and we do have equipment in the deck, so that's a good matchup card for them. They're going for the dig. Another cleave and a skyclave off the top. They're taking all our goodies still. Right? Discard the lands. They should hit the Hallow Blade and tap it. I think we can sacrifice one of our Aspirant. Nice. A very light hand in the land department, but I really like it. Our opponent's just gone down the mulligan alley, so we're not even going to get to play this game. No concede immediately. Yeah. Ah! One time we get a decent hand. Tossing this, looking for better land. This is it. Keeping six. Tossing the cleave. Mountain first, unless we pull up planes. Nice. Losing our maul. And they get to see our hand, which is the key component for them. Luris, Luris, Luris. With a turn one duress. Turn two, self mill plus life. Hopefully we can avoid removal. They do have death touch, but whatever. Ooh. I hope we pull secondary planes. No way. 
Nice. In what world? In what world? Yeah, that's straight up frightening. It's cost one. Just equipped creature gains flying. Not bad. Especially with all that glitters. We're getting beat down with an 8 7. Wow. Well, this is this is it here. We can Oh, just give it indestructible. Are you serious? Woo! Nice. Woof. Good hand, not enough land. We can keep this. And let's toss the apparition because, you know, the land for that's not going to happen. And at least we can play into turn two. Oh, and there's our source of white within Pillar Verge Pathway. So since we know there's removal, we'll push our blade out first. I guess they're both blades, but the hallowed blade is uh, has the ability for indestructible, whereas the uh, intimidator does not. We have a lot of cards in hand. Hopefully, a lot of them are land. We're done on land. We don't need to pull anymore. A duress can't take anything. These are both creatures. Nice. They get to see our hand, which is still a huge help. Decent. A lot of warriors in play here. But, that's fine. We can give them both indestructible. That's gonna be a big help. Who is running that in the main deck? Woo! <laughs> nice. We lost indestructible there. It was so silly. Hit for five at least, down to twelve. <laughs> That's a good card to be running. Uh, you know, Souls here. It's a little expensive, but losing indestructible is good. A lot of uh, people rely on indestructible. We're all even, aren't we? No, we got one odd. All right, we get to keep our arc priest at least. They seem to have all the answers for us. We're down to one. Dumb passage. We don't even have that many land in the deck, so it's kind of unpleasant. Down to 11. Big hits, baby, big hits. There's the giant, okay. The spear. That's gonna be game. Unless we can top deck apparitions and stuff that, uh, you know, a legion angel would be very good. 
An Amber Cleave is not enough right now. <laughs> I mean, it's a start, but... We need a body in play first. It's our turn. Okay, now we're talking a little bit here. A little bit. Their life gain just outpaces us so hard! Good game. You know, I think we just need maybe a few more one drops in the deck and we're good to go. This can be a mountain. We want to hit the apparition, but we still also want to hit the cleave, so it's kind of weird. And we have no one drop, so let's just get it out of the way. We have fewer red sources, so we'll pull a mountain. I like these double robber drops. Hopefully we can get those out on turn four. When we're against Rakdos Colors, we know there's removal, so a little bit of indestructible can go a long ways. Grixis, we're in for a fun time here. Okay. That was instant speed. They should have done that uh, like right now, and then we would have had to tap ourselves. Wow, that didn't allow us to select. <laughs> Whatever, we'll play around it, but... You seen how it didn't allow me to select the other side of the pathway? That's weird. We could use a few more creatures here, that's for sure, but we'll keep it. Could have thinned right out of the gate, but... We have, uh... How many cards in hand? One, two, three, four, five, six. And they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, I think we just go straight at the robber. And we'll hold the Intimidator for later. And we'll get as many scoops as we can. Hey, I can use a Fury. That's instant speed as well. That could be our finisher. We need to dodge the stomp here. Nice. A ram through? This is good as well. More instant speed. I like that. So we know we can attack it before uh, blockers and stuff are declared. We'll have access to uh, these spells. We can double drop these Intimidators, and we're ready to cleave as well. We can pull planes here. In case we pull an Apparition. Our opponents suck on land, it seems. And a Bone Crusher Giant. 
it's hard to believe that they're stuck on lands considering we've pulled three non-lands off their library, right? It's not like we're taking the lands away from them. Ouch. This is a draw hand that I know is a pipe dream. It's perfect. It's so good. If we can pull an apparition, we're all set. If not, I might go double mountain for cleave. We'll go as slow as we can though with our pathway to decide. Green, uh, there could be removal through fight effects here. The Arc Priest of Iona is just such an amazing card. Which I didn't pull a single copy of. So sad. The Ooze. Oh no, we get it. We get just what we wanted. In with a Warrior. No attacks. We need to avoid the fight effects. Yorvo's good. I forget about this card sometimes, so... We're gonna Apparition the heck out of it. I'll make that trade. Cool. Just so they don't have something to use a ram through or a, some fight effect on of their own. Uh, ah! <laughs> ah! Got haste. That's fun. It's bad value. not good we need to be the aggressor this questing beast turned it all around oh no sploosh maybe we can pick up a cleave nice this is a five drop we can take the beast though right that's really good They can kill the priest and lose Vivian, or we just get the one damage through. Down to three. I mean, they can still minus two. Deep breaths. They're at six mana. It's a plus. That's okay with reach. Playing defensively. Another Yorvo. That's okay still as well. They've got two cards left. We top deck a third apparition. <laughs> and Ember Cleave would be great here as well. Uh oh. We're having a little bit of a latency issue. There, oh, we're back, okay. <laughs> oh, you never know. Sometimes sometimes we get hit with the connection bug. And it's no good. Maybe it's still around. Mmm. And then you're never sure whether or not you reconnect to the server. Okay, we're still here. We're here. We're here. 
Oh, that's a good play. And we pull land. Of course we do. Rogue will push up the Arc Priest. Vivian's great. Very underrated, I think. Basil, it's not bad. They don't want to tap. Oh, playing creatures from the top of their library and they get a shambler. Nice. That's so sick. We're gonna get stomped on real quick here. Oh no. That reach really messed us up. That's our whole get. Good game. Well, I mean, you know, there's no priest for one drop, but it's fine. Oof. Oof. Okay. They know exactly what we're using. <laughs> Who's playing rogues at 82%? This is where we play jank at, man. You should be like top 500, shouldn't you? They can counter anything we do here. Oh! The robber should block, uh, you know, some shenanigans, hopefully. That's okay. That's okay. Let me crank this up a little bit. A little bright now, though, eh? <laughs> taking the crab. Then grab a 1-1 one, one back. It's about taking the ability away. Woof. Maybe that's too bright, actually. Feels very bright. This is the whitest shirt I own, apparently. It's glowing. <laughs> really? Really? Sploosh. Got death touch there's no way to get rid of it Woo! Oh, a hollow blade does a good job of getting rid of it let's stack on the blade i guess right we can discard some lands for indestructible Always blocking rogues at this point from Zareth Sen, right? Nice. So we tap to tap, so we can't block with the blade. It's a good play on their behalf. I'm just gonna. Zareth Sen is four, right? Uh, there's so many good things for them to take. Let's call the bluff. 
There's no way that they have a perfect hand. That would have to be the card that they own. No, we're good. We're okay. Let's take the Enforcer. Again, it just comes back as a 1-1. Getting rid of that Death Touch is like real good. We're going to play our Intimidator as well. Losing our Indestructible ability, but that's fine. Taking the one to one out, just whatever, right? Ooh, they take the damage. Interesting. They know it's only gonna get stronger, right? So the later on in the game that they can block it, the better. Or just rider hits, we lose our Luminarch, bummer. Oh, there it is, hit him with the heat. Uh... We cast this for three. Um. It's still better to put it on the blade, but we'll do both. Oh, and we need to uh, make it so this is a coward. I think we might have gone too far. Oh, my bad. My bad. Huh. Let's just wrap it up then. Nice. Sorry, rogues. Wow, this is the most fun I've had playing Magic since release, since Zendikar came out. And even when Zendikar came out, I had massive technical issues where my computer wasn't rendering, so it was kind of a stressful day. Um, but yeah, this is great. Um, I know people are like, eh, it's not the greatest right now. Think outside the box. Just We know what's strong. Let's start mixing some of these spices together and seeing what kind of brews we can get. This all started with the Relic Robber. And then I was like, well, we need them all the Skyclaves on that as well. And, you know, of course, you're red, so Embercleave has to go in. And now you build around it. And, well, it's a rogue, so, well, let's fill that out, right? And now we have a party deck that uh, is very, very aggressive. The only thing that's not a party roll is the Apparition, but it holds such high value with being both removal and a creature. That is totally fine by me. So thank you again for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share it to a friend, and of course hit that bell icon. We're gonna do a gem giveaway at 20,000 subs. Uh, so tell everybody about it. Uh, I haven't really decided the thing yet, but we've got such a long time between 10 and 100 that we need some we need some more stuff to give away to you guys, right? So I do thank you for your time and attention. Make sure to uh, get at me on Discord if you have anything important that I need to know about and go enjoy uh, another video of mine. That would be awesome. All right, take care. See you later.